Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a good week. So happy that you're here with me today on March 22nd. Happy spring. I know today doesn't feel like spring. We're calling for snow later today. And in Ontario, it is minus six Celsius. That is 21 Fahrenheit. Now, in my family, there's a couple of people who play hockey. Uh, one's a goalie and one plays defense, and there's something they call talking about the shutout. And because today we're talking about um, spring and getting ready for warmer weather, that might be talking about the shutout, and <laughs> that's talking about something before it happens and calls on the opposite. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I still am going to say happy spring. I'm Kathy. Welcome to Yarn with Heart. Um, today in this chat, I will be sharing five tips that get us ready for when the weather starts to get warmer as everyone prepares to knit and crochet year round. Um, also about a household item that I made for the tropical bird make along and a few updates on blankets that I'm working on this month. Um, on Monday, I received happy mail from Gina at Knitting Turnpike. My name was picked on her giveaway, and I have permission from her to show what I received. So thank you so very much, Gina. Um, the happy mail will be in a separate video if you would like to pop over and take a look there after you watch this one. Um, Next week will be about a completed blanket. I, I hope it'll be completed by next week. And about a prayer shawl that I completed this month. Um, using yarn from the You Decide vote that we had in January. For those who are new to the jam channel, the vote was about what to do with some pink and white uh, and gray yarn that I was challenging myself to knit a half hour a day with. There was enough yarn after the completion of the baby blanket to make a lovely shawl that I will bring to my prayer shawl group uh, at their next meeting on the first Friday of April. Um, excuse me. And also next week, maybe a couple of fun new things to try. So if you subscribe and ring the notification bell, you won't miss that next video on March 29th. So for this week, we're talking about spring yarn tips and crochet works in progress. So these are the things that I will be doing the next four to six weeks before the weather starts to really warm up. Um, tip number one, the first few weeks is a good timing. I'm going to have to go over here just to pick it up. The first few weeks is a good timing to finish any large whips that are almost done. Ones that will be hot on the legs when the temperature is getting warmer. Um, this one is a bag a day blanket that it's called the Peekaboo Shells Blanket. And I did use the bag a day tutorial. This pattern was suggested to me by Christine Abrams in a comment to me. And she has permission to mention her name and uh, I'll put a link to her YouTube channel down in the description box. Um, I have loved the pattern. 
And if you haven't seen Christine's channel yet, she's very friendly and works on many interesting uh, projects. All of them are crochet. I will, um, I, I will say that I started this blanket in February and I had hoped to be finished by March 8th. Now, part of the reason I'm still working on it I will put a picture somewhere up here. Now, I'm not going to say what yarn this is. It is a discontinued one, and I don't want to out any particular uh, any particular company or skeins of yarn because, you know, haven't we all had times when skeins do this sort of thing? And I must admit, I got frustrated and put the project in timeout for a while. I'm hoping to have this blanket finished next week. So that was tip number one. If you do have any whips that are going to be quite large, this one will end up being 60 inches square. Um, now, while the weather is still not warm, would be a good time to work on them. Now, tip number two. Um, as you know, I've been working on um, granny squares, and I'll show you here. These are the ones that I have finished so far, and a few that are partway finished. Um, so tip number two, begin projects that are made of strips or squares because first of all, they travel well. And when the weather does start, does get warmer, don't we all love to go on outings and travel more? They are nice to work on in warmer weather and they can be joined at a time when the weather cools down. Um, this granny square blanket, I am using a six millimeter hook and the pattern called a cup of sunshine crochet flower coaster. It is um, designed to use cotton yarn. And of course it's a coaster. It's free on the website called crochet with Gabriella Rose, or there's a paid pattern available on Ravelry. The yarns I'm using are one pound yarn ends bags from Mary Maxim. Plus I'm also using the Mary Maxim Maximum Value Yarn in white and rose ombre. You can see the March 15th video that I made for more details about this pattern. I am liking how it's working up and I hope to make enough of these squares for about a 40 inch by 54 inch rectangle if all goes well. And then I would also like to add in a pretty border by adapting a pattern. This pattern, it's called the Flowers in a Row Blanket Pattern by Melissa Liebman. It's free on Yarnspirations. I'd like to make a four inch border on the outside of the granny squares. And I think it'll be exciting to try. I did try making a small um, a swatch of the pattern and I hope that that will work out. So that's the plan with that. So that's tip number two to you do projects that are made of strips or squares. Yeah, and tip number three, sometimes do projects that use cotton or linen or bamboo instead of acrylic and wools. Um, maybe include some wearables or household items from summery yarns. Um, one of the patterns that I tried as a possibility with the granny square blanket was this one. This one's called the Premier Full Bloom Dishcloth by Premier Yarns Design Team. 
So I did try this one and I thought it might be um, a good one for the blanket, but I decided not as it's using a lot of yarn per square. And I'm concerned that I might run out of some of the colorful yarn. But also since this is a blanket for donation and the blankets might be stored with many other blankets in large clear bags, the flowers could get squished and misshapen during storage. So this pattern would, however, make a very pretty hot pad if made in two layers out of 100% cotton. So that's what I'm planning as a possibility with this one. I'm going to um, consider making a large flower and then in 100% cotton and then a similar sized um, piece that's just a, a flat piece and then join the two. So it'll be nice. It'll end up almost like three layers and can be used to put on a hot, a warm bowl or something on the table. I thought that would be really pretty. So that's how I adapted that one. And I must say, if somebody is making a blanket for their home, this would be quite nice to use as a square in a blanket. It's very textured. And if you're not worried about things, heavy things piling on, on top of it, that would be quite beautiful in um, one's own blanket. So that's tip number three. And now there's only five tips, so two more tips left. Oh, plus two bonus tips. Um, tip number four is to get a head start on the gift cupboard. And I did do that. Um, as we know, I participate in the Tropical Bird of the Month Crochet Make Along by Judy's Creations in Crochet. I'll put a picture up in the corner right here of um, this month's bird. And I used this book to get the pattern that um, I referred to. I made what they call a fruit basket. This book's called Granny Squares, Over 25 Creative Ways to Crochet the Classic Pattern. The book's by Stephanie Gore, Melanie Strum, and Barbara Wilder. I used a five millimeter hook and I modified this um, basket by doubling the thickness of this edge. So yeah, a five millimeter hook. I might add a plastic square and a second layer to stiffen the bottom. You can see that the bottom is a little, it sort of curves in on the bottom. But if someone is setting it on the table, I think that will be okay. I use Bernat Super, Super Value in the colors Lush and Burgundy and Loops and Threads, Impeccable in the color Orange Crush. Also a tangle bag from um, Cambridge Fibers in the color yellow. So um, this I will probably gift to one of my aunts because she likes to collect baskets and this I think she'll really enjoy. And it will be different from any other basket that she has. Other small project ideas, of course, are hats and scarves and cowls and cute season specific items, small items for donation. So yeah, by working on one gift a week from now until the end of the summer, a lot of this um, um, 
holiday a lot of holiday gift needs could be ready before the crush of the end of the year season comes. So tip number five um, is to check to moth proof all yarns and also find any finished items or items in the closet or drawers that are currently worn that need to be uh, repaired, replaced, and for finished items, wash and leave plenty of time for them to dry well before storing. Now is the time before the warm weather comes. This is especially important if using any animal fibers as moths will be flying outside soon and it is important to guard against damage. So that's tip number five. Now, two bonus tips. These are from the comments. One was to make a shopping trip at a favorite location to get some yarns that will be needed during summer makes. That one is always fun. And another from the comments. Someone had said, continue making the same projects year round. And I think that's a good choice as well. So to everyone, Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your crochet. Enjoy your knitting. And I hope to see you next Friday.